what's up, Dave with Brazos Valley Strength. Today's video will hopefully be what should be a complete guide for everything that you could possibly want out of the safety squat bar. So I did ask this on Instagram. I posted that I was making this video this week and I got a lot of really good questions from you guys. So in the future, I'm gonna be trying to do that a little bit more because sometimes I don't know what I don't know. Uh, I, I'm going to cover the big things like handles up or down. That's one of the major questions with the safety squat bar, but I'm gonna be trying to do that a little bit more often. So I appreciate y'all's engagement and hopefully it helped come up with what will be a really, really good guide here for everything safety bar related. So one of the first things that I did want to cover is how much the brand of Safety Squat Bar really does matter. Uh, I've had a bunch of different bars over the years. I think the first Safety Squat Bar I ever used was in a commercial gym. I had no idea what it was, but it was, you know, small kind of thing. Um, horrible, you know, never used it. The second bar I ever had was a Rogue Safety Squat Bar. For those of you that have that bar, I think you're probably cringing already. Uh, it is a horrible, horrible experience using it. So as we can see right here, this is the Elite FTS Safety Squat Bar. I think they call it the Safety Squat Yoke or whatever is Safety Squat Bar. The biggest difference is the padding up top. And it seems like something that, you know, most of us as lifters, you know, we think we're pretty tough, but it makes a humongous difference with where this bar sits. We'll cover some of the, the stuff about where the bar is sitting and why that matters later, but to be a bit of a spoiler, it's gonna sit a whole lot higher. And so because of that, it sits on your neck a little bit, but the big thing is that these handles right here come right across your collarbones. That is the most important thing. Rogue's bar is horrible. The, the padding does not come completely down in the front right in here, and it comes right across your collarbones, and it is the most unpleasant experience you could possibly have squatting. There were many times that I tried to program this in my old programs a few years ago. I couldn't get through more than like two weeks. It was, it was just so entirely uncomfortable. So don't ever get that bar. If you're trying to use that bar, then yeah, good luck to you. It's gonna be really, really difficult. The bars that I would recommend are either the safety squat bar from Elite FTS, or my understanding is that the Titan safety squat bar is essentially identical. So the other bar is the, uh, the Kabuki strength bar, their safety squat bar that has all the, the adjustments on it. I've never personally used that bar, but I've had three, four clients that have had it in their gyms and we've tried to use it. We've tried to play around with different settings on it, low bar, front squat, whatever. Most of the time, the feedback was that it was just very awkward and kind of uncomfortable doing those things. And I think it also had a bit of padding issues. Now, I don't know if that's been resolved, but it seems like that bar was a whole lot more expensive for what doesn't really seem like much gain. So if you're in the market for a safety squat bar, I think that this bar, the Elite FPS bar, or the Titan bar are both very, very good options. Along with that, many of the other exercises that I'll talk about later, I think are maybe only gonna work on a bar like this. Um, so I, I think as far as utility, this bar ends up potentially being a little bit better. So the bar does matter. I think that there's probably some tough guys out there that will say that it doesn't. Um, but ultimately the big thing that it is if you can't be comfortable with your training with this bar, it's really just not gonna work a whole lot. So as far as what our goals and expectations are, when we're using the safety squat bar. The main objective is that it's going to make it a little bit harder, uh, potentially a lot harder, on your upper back. Now, I think that that probably already will have some people asking some questions. I think most of the time people think quads, and uh, like maybe, right? But I think if we go back to a comparison that I used in my how to low bar squat video, was that comparing the, the high bar squat and the low bar squat, they're really not that much different as far as what goes on with your legs. And the main reason that the high bar squat is significantly harder for most people than the low bar squat is the difference in moment, the difference in the strength that it takes to maintain extension from your hips to wherever the bar is. So the higher we move that bar away from your hips, the further away from the hips we move it, it gets harder. Also, the more in front of you that the bar tends to sit, also is going to increase the extension strength demands of your back. So 
The safety squat bar can be a really, really good tool for challenging upper back strength or kind of general trunk strength overall. I, I think that at times that can kind of be, um, I don't know, misutilized it, is that if we're using this bar to just go after upper back strength, I think we're going to hit a wall very, very quickly and it gets very hard. And I don't like thinking of it necessarily as upper back strength on its own, but I do think that the cueing kind of the process behind working against the barbell is really what we need to feel. So the bar itself sits a little bit higher on you. The bar has these little cambers on it, which also potentially makes it sit slightly in front of you. And those two things are going to make it really, really challenging. So when we're doing the squat, our whole process during this is hopefully to try to replicate our squat as similarly as we can, right? To your normal squat technique, just a balance on top of your feet and learn to work against the barbell, learn to be active with your upper body against the weight of the barbell. So that leads me to the big ultimate question of what should I do with the handles? There's a lot of different uh, techniques, I guess, out there. And genuinely, I think you could potentially make an argument given context for handles up or handles down. The way that makes the most sense to me, the way that I recommend is my clients, and what genuinely I think is correct is that the handles should be neutral. Meaning that when the barbell is sitting on your back, the handles will be slightly at an angle. We'll, we'll call it 45 degrees. But where the barbell sits fairly naturally on your back, we want to maintain that angle relative to the floor during the entire rep. The reason to me is fairly obvious in that there's no other variation. Let, let's, we'll say low bar, high bar, whatever. There's no other squat that we want to actively be pushing the load where the, the weight center of mass is relative to our base of support. So if I'm standing at the top and I have myself situated with the barbell resting, you know, my, my, now my center of mass is on top of my feet. As I'm starting the descent, I don't really see any value in pushing the handles up or pushing the handles down. And you can see when I do that, it affects where the load is. By me pushing the handles up, it pushes the weight more in front of me. When I pull the handles down, it pulls it further behind me. So if I'm affecting my center of mass, if I'm affecting where the weight is, that is going to cause issues when I'm coming up out of the bottom. I think the most common thing that people want to try to do is push the handle up in order to try to stay more upright or to, to you know, challenge their upper back more and make it feel more like a front squat and all of those kind of things. And I think potentially that can work, but the issue is that it makes it so dramatically more difficult than what it is when it's sitting there. I mean, essentially we're moving into a front squat position. So if the bar itself, where it's already sitting in the neutral position, is already going to be challenging your upper back more, then I don't necessarily see the value in making it significantly harder where we're already probably getting enough challenge, enough benefit in that capacity. And potentially by leaving it alone and making it a little bit more balanced and neutral through the entire rep, we should be able to practice that and get a better carryover to our competition lifts where we very much during the entire rep are trying to keep the weight over our feet, over our base of support. So, the answer to handles up or down is that it should generally be neutral through the whole rep. And one of the things I said was that the bar should stay at its angle relative to the floor. So during your descent, your trunk angle will change. Your trunk angle will incline a little bit more. So for most people, that means a slight bit of upward pressure on the barbell to maintain its angle relative to the floor. So that will keep the bar organized above your feet from where your starting position and your body is moving underneath it. Hopefully that should apply very, very well when you're going into your competition lifts, because when we're doing low bar squats, high bar squats, whatever, our objective with those is to keep the bar stacked on top of our feet. There's going to be some changes. Sometimes our elbows move position. Sometimes the bar moves further into our hands. All of those kind of things that happen naturally when we're doing, we'll call it low bar squats, are essentially the same thing that we're trying to do with the safety squat bar, is those things are happening to keep the bar still on top of our foot while we're maintaining the integrity of our body beneath the bar. 
So that's where this bar can be very, very beneficial is that we're increasing the challenge to do those things. We're increasing the challenge to maintain that back extension, maintain our brace, fight for the, the balance on top of our feet. And it's just more challenging to do. So I think that's where the safety squat bar really does have value is that it's a, as any variation would be, something that hopefully draws attention to the correct details that we're going after really in any moment. So when we're using the safety squat bar, it should help draw attention to the details as far as me needing to fight for my posture with my upper body. One of the good things that the safety squat bar can do is that it does tend to bias people into a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt. The way that the bar is situated, it does feel like it has a little bit of this kind of like rotational force on it. And I think it can really, really help a lot of people brace pretty well. It kind of pulls your rib cage down a little bit. So that also kind of makes it a little bit more difficult already if we're biasing a little bit towards that, you know, flexion position, that it does make it hard. It makes it very difficult for people to maintain their upper back posture. And, you know, there's limitations by it being so hard for some people. Now, one of the other issues along with that is that people that have some sort of flexion sensitivity, this is a common thing with a lot of people who struggle to do the safety squat bar and kind of feel like it beats them up a lot is if they're sensitive to those more kind of flexion movements, right? Sometimes people will feel like it, it bugs their backs and, and those kind of things. They pop up every time we use them in the block and they may have similar difficulties if we're doing deadlifts and those kind of things that they have a, a sensitivity to that flexion bias. They may not be a good fit for this bar. Um, for sure, when I do the bar, I automatically feel like my pelvis is kind of sitting in a little bit more of a posterior tilt than it normally would. I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's part of the bar. I think it helps teach bracing. Um, and as long as we're, we're you know, knowing what's going on with the bar and how to feel it, and then from there, fighting against it, I think that this can be a really, really good tool. But I think those are just useful, useful pieces of information to know going in really what you're looking for and potentially what some of the, the drawbacks and risks are. So the two common questions, the two common errors that people told me most frequently on Instagram that they had trouble with was either feeling like they're falling over way too much out of the hole and mostly because they're trying to be too upright or they don't know what to do with their elbows. And most of the time that's coming from the opposite is that they're cueing that the handles need to come down and that they want their, you know, everything kind of biased towards their legs. So again, you know, just backing up, I think both of those can potentially be solved by what I said originally is just trying to find a more neutral position and fighting for that. But I'll start, I'll, I'll give a, a brief explanation of both of those errors and what we can do to fix them. So the, the first one I think is the most common is that people have the bar and they feel that it's pulling them towards that kind of flexion bias, that rib cage down posterior pelvic tilt. And it's a position that most people are not very comfortable with. I think in pretty much every one of my videos, you've heard some mention of bracing and those kind of mechanics and being able to, to draw the ribcage down at least a little bit to create that neutral posture and expand into it. It's just not something that I think almost anybody does very, very well. Um, so I think the bar that biases you towards that position ends up being very uncomfortable for most people. So because it's kind of biasing people forwards, people tend to really want to push up on the bar. And so what that does is it does push people into a dramatically more extended position. And then from there, the bar is a little bit higher. The weight on the bar is a little bit higher, a little bit more out in front of them. We get down to the bottom and we can't maintain that position and everything comes rounding back over. <laughs> it's like the most common way that, that I see people really having trouble with the safety squat bar. So it just goes back to the mechanics in general, that we should be trying to keep the bar neutral, but more so than that, that the bar is a tool to help learn all of the other mechanics below it, that I need to brace with my abdomen into my belt and create rigidity there, that I need to be working to maintain my upper back posture, not trying to fight to get into extension, but to fight to maintain the neutrality by fighting against the bar with my upper back. So that's probably the most common error. And I think it just comes from the starting point of people not really having a good understanding of what they're going for with squatting in general. So that's the biggest thing, right? To get the most out of this barbell, you really do have to have a good goal, a good process for what you're looking for with your squats overall. The other error I think is probably just queuing or like we, we've found that by descending down, we can 
kind of reduce the load down at the bottom um, by really rounding our upper backs and putting our elbows on our legs. Really, that one's an easy fix. Just don't do that, right? Uh, just, just fight against it, right? We need to maintain the, the leverage through the whole rep and treat it as if it were a normal squat. It is difficult. It, it does take effort to be able to fight against it in that way. But I, I just think that um, as far as the, the carryover, what we're going for by using the safety squat bar in general, that to me doesn't feel like a squat, right? Like if we're using it for something to increase your upper back strength, I think there's other options, right? We can do good mornings or, or other exercises that I'll address. Um, but but it, to me, that seems like we're kind of diverging too far away from the, uh, the original utility of the bar in the first place. So finally, I wanted to talk about what other exercises that we can do with the safety squat bar. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, I'll talk about the, the ones that I tend to use a whole lot, and then I'll talk about some that I think I see more often uh, that I, I, I don't think are all that useful. Um, I, and, and on that note, because of the versatility of this barbell, I think it's if you're gonna get a bar besides a just a regular power bar for your gym, I think the safety squat bar is a is a really, really good tool to add some of these other options, especially if you're training in a home gym environment. I talked about in my home gym video how having other options for hypertrophy kind of exercises and variety makes a really big difference. The safety squat bar is a affordable option that really does create a lot of other options. So one of the biggest things that the safety squat bar can potentially do for us is add more options for single leg work, kind of hypertrophy kind of work. And lunges, split squats, those kind of exercises are obviously what we would, we would go to with those, but potentially not in the way that, that people would expect. So I think the common way that people see the safety squat bar being used is a rear, rear leg elevated Bulgarian split squat. Now, I think that this is a potentially productive exercise. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit biased because it is also how I tore my adductor, but I think that there were some issues associated with how I was doing it. Potentially going too low, my back foot being elevated. Too far, my, my back foot was elevated more than it needed to be, which actually brings me to the utility of this barbell as a training tool for better split squats. If you have a barbell or you don't need the safety squat bar, you can find other ways to, to do this in the gym. I actually have a, a roller that's meant for this. But if you're purchasing this barbell, it adds you a really good opportunity to do better split squats. So what you can do with this barbell is you can rack it low in your rack. If you, if you have like a combo rack or a rack that doesn't go all the way down, you can just put it on a deadlift jack. That also works pretty well too. But it's adjustable if you put it in the rack. From there, it makes a really, really good mount for your back leg to put you in a much better position for dumbbell split squats or whatever other split squats that you wanna be doing. So by the back leg being put in a better position, for one, being lower, it helps you be a lot more comfortable and not limited by the range of motion by, in your back leg. Oftentimes, and what happened to me, was that people's back leg is too high and then by getting down into the bottom of the, of the split squat, it pulled me and kind of rotated me into a position that was dangerous apparently. So with this bar, I can lower that to where my back leg is essentially out of the equation and have it postured so that my foot is just resting over the bar. And it makes people way more comfortable when they're not having to fight their back leg and actually have a lot more range of motion and train their front leg significantly harder. So this is a really, really good variation that I think more people should be doing. If you're already doing split squats, I would certainly look at how you're setting your back leg. If you don't have it in a good position, you're probably taking weight off the bar for one, because you're just not as comfortable and the position that you're in is just not optimal. So using the safety squat bar for this is a really, really good tool. Obviously there's other options, but this one works great. So. The other one that I like here too is just straight up lunges. So instead of doing the rear foot elevated split squat, which I mentioned that there's some, some potentially dangerous balance issues, we can just do walking lunges in a rack and use some supports. One thing that I think is important to think about when we're using the safety squat bar for unilateral movement is that the load is not necessarily squared over our feet, right? So, for some context here, if I'm using dumbbells and I move to a single leg movement, I can shift that weight, right? 
if, if I move over my left foot, the dumbbells are able to hover on top of that foot. And I'm able to do my split squats directly on top of my base of support being that single leg. The opposite is not necessarily true with this bar because it's stacked on top of my trunk. So I would have to move my whole body and then I have some weird kind of balance issues when I'm using the safety squat bar versus dumbbell. So I don't love the safety squat bar for single leg work unless I have the option to add a little bit of stability. So for me, just standing in place lunges tend to be a better exercise for the safety squat bar than a rear foot elevated split squat because the balance is a little bit more manageable um, and it, it tends to be something that people enjoy a little bit more because it can be a little bit more uh, tolerable and accessible for a lot of people. And another really, really good option for your back strength, we already talked about how the majority of the, the training from this bar is going to be about back strength and kind of trunk training overall. Good mornings with the safety squat bar are uh, my go-to way. I basically at this point won't do good mornings without using the safety squat bar. So for me, the concept of good mornings, I think is a, is a great exercise overall, but some of the issues with them, uh, I mean, are, are comfort and some of the other like physics uh, of it don't make sense if I'm going to out or going to prioritize my comfort. So if I'm just using a high bar position for a good morning, as I get closer and closer to parallel with my upper back, that bar really is wanting to move up my neck, right? It's, it's gonna get to where it's basically only rected, uh, uh, supported by my, uh, by my cervical spine, and that does not feel good. So I really don't like doing good mornings in a high bar position. So what I tended to do, and I think what a lot of people tend to do, is they move the bar into a lower bar position. But as we've talked about, the main thing that happens when I move the bar down on my back is I'm reducing the moment. I'm reducing the force required to maintain extension strength in my back. So by moving the bar down on my back, I'm just creating a much more efficient movement to do good mornings. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's probably a very good thing if I'm just going after hamstring strength. Right? By reducing the load that my back has to work for in, when I'm doing good mornings in a lower bar position, I may be able to train my hamstring slightly stronger, slightly harder. That's okay, right? Like that's not a terrible trade-off. But if I'm trying to train my back in my good mornings and fight for extension, I've kind of lost that ability by moving the bar there. So the safety squat bar works very, very well for that. So it, it just sits much more comfortably on your neck. You can, you can manipulate kind of where the load is a little bit to keep it mid, mid foot as you hinge. Um, it resting on your cervical spine is much, much more comfortable. Um, and, I, and I just think it, it fits the posture that you wanna be in the good mornings, kind of that more rib cage down position and not just worried about what the barbell is doing. So I think that good mornings with the safety squat bar are one of the, the most underrated ways to actually execute a good morning and one of the best ways to use this bar. And finally, as far as exercises that I really like, doing tricep extensions with the safety squat bar is a great exercise. So I, I don't know if this is technically a JM press or a skull crusher or whatever, rolling tricep extension, doesn't really matter. But these handles, at least on this bar, can be removed. And so from there, we can do this as a tricep extension laying down and get a really, really good pump. And the reason why I like this for tricep exercises over many other exercises is that it can go fairly heavy, but it reduces some of the stress down at the bottom because the handles are actually resting on my body. So it ends up being very hard, uh, but the load is reduced enough at the bottom to where my elbows don't get super cranky, and I still feel like I can train my triceps really, really hard. So if you do have access to the safety squat bar, I totally recommend trying this. And finally, for the exercises that I see most commonly, but I just don't really think that have as much utility as people really want them to. And first and foremost, it's the safety bar front squat. Now, to get into front squats, all you do is you turn the bar around. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this early in the video, but one of the main things with the safety squat bar is that when you're facing the bar to be in the right direction, it should be sitting angled away from you. The camber of the bar sits more naturally, otherwise it sits like way more in front of you. We don't really want that. But for the front squat, if you turn it around, same angle, right? The, the camber is coming down this way. So now that the handles are facing you, people can do front squats 
in a much more comfortable position than what a normal front squat would be for them. Now, my issue with doing this overall is just that I don't see the added value from doing safety bar front squats over the safety bar itself in a normal position. Because if I'm doing front squats, the objective again is to be fighting for more upper back extension strength. Um, that's gonna be where, the, where we're limited. When we fail them, it's always gonna be the upper back rolling forward. But that's the same thing that happens when I'm doing it with the regular safety squat bar. But because the load is something that we're much more familiar with and potentially will transfer better feel wise over to our competition lifts, I don't really get why doing safety bar front squats would be something that would add more value than doing regular safety bar squats. Now, I guess possibly you could add it in for a variety for like high reps at the end of a workout or something like that, where you're just trying to get a pump or something, you know, where, where the value, you know, kind of the trade-off is, is pretty negligible. But for me, the objective of that exercise is the exact same objective as just using the safety bar in the normal way. And so I think it adds, uh, I don't know, uh, stimulus, but without a lot of real return as far as our strength transferring over to the competition left. So for me, I would skip the safety squat bar front squat. Um, not saying it's the worst thing ever, uh, but if you're doing it, I think wherever you have it, you could just as easily substitute just a regular safety bar squat and you would probably be okay. And finally, the last one that, uh, <laughs> that, that I think is, is probably one of the most ego lifts there is, is the safety bar Hatfield squat. So with the Hatfield squat, you would set up a, a bar or um, little pins to support. And then from there, you do a full squat with your hands helping you. I don't know what the objective is for this one overall. Um, I, I think a lot of times people do it. They, they say that they're overloading their squat. Um, they're, they're trying to, <laughs> I mean, essentially that, right? Like upper back, legs, whatever. Um, but that, that concept overall, I think is something that is significantly overrated. Um, you know, if you're, if you're overloading your squat with your muscles can only produce the force that they can produce. So putting more weight on the bar doesn't provide a stimulus when you're using your hands to support yourself on the way up. So your, your quads, your upper back, all of that are getting the same stimulus as if you were to, you know, do normal reps. Um, and you know, potentially the pattern is different. And for me also the fatigue that I would, I've tried them before just as a, as an experiment and the concept of me putting on significantly more weight than I could do for whatever rep range without adding a lot of value it just seems to add way more fatigue than it actually adds stimulus. Let's say I was doing like hard sets of five. We'll make up something. I'm gonna do three sets of five at an eight RPE. Something that's very, very difficult. But instead I wanna do three sets of five Hatfield squats at an eight RPE. I would struggle to understand why the Hatfield squat would provide more stimulus than what a regular squat would in that pattern especially since if I'm doing one rep, I'm using my hands not as much and I progressively am using more and more hands, that I'm just doing reps, m many more reps that are significantly closer and closer to failure. Um, that, that just doesn't really seem like, like something that is the most productive way uh, to really provide a strength stimulus. So if you're doing Hatfield squats with the safety squat bar, I would, uh, I would just say you could find a better option. So hopefully we covered everything there is to know about the safety squat bar. If I did miss anything, go ahead and put it in the comments and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I also now have more of my affiliate links, SBD, uh, my pre-workout that I use, all of those will be in the description of this video and all the other videos. Also the apparel for Brazos Valley Strength is in that as well. So if you like these videos and you like the content overall, stuff that you purchase from there does support me directly. So that is the, the best way to give back. But if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.